In Matthew 4, again we read that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tested and tried or to put to use the word from the Father and the anointing of the Spirit upon him as a man. Let me read that to you again. Let me paraphrase that and give you a little bit of light about it. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tested and put to use the word that he had heard from the Father. Thou art my beloved Son, and you I am well pleased. You remember that at the baptism? And uh, not only did he have the word as a, as a man, you have to see that as a man, Jesus received a word from the Father's mouth, and the, the Spirit of God came upon him, and uh, for the ministry, for the life that he was to now follow the Father in. And so the first thing the Father did was take him to the wilderness. <laughs> That's funny, really, when you start thinking about it. Modern Christianity, and especially Western Christianity, we don't make room for this. We're always talking about that, how God's going to encourage you, encourage you, encourage you. We don't understand that God is doing for this for our good and our encouragement. But we're looking for humanistic encouragement and pep rallies and people to pat us on the back and tell us how, how good God is and be positive, be positive, be positive, and all that. It's just a bunch of humanistic preaching. And... Uh, it doesn't help you stand the trials of life and go through what you have to go through in, war, in the world. You ever notice that, that a lot of times when, when uh, the things you think you know about God, you get in the midst of something and it doesn't work? <laughs> There's no re hardly any reality to it. Maybe, maybe we've been eating the wrong stuff. Maybe we need to start really partaking of the word of God. But anyway, the Spirit of the Lord led Jesus into the wilderness there to be tried and to put to use and to confront the devil for all of us. Not just for him, but as a man. But he did that for mankind. And so the tempter comes to him and challenges the word that he has heard. If you are the Son of God. <laughs> you ever been challenged over the word that you have heard from God? You ever been confronted with after God has given you a promise or you feel some hope in your life? or like, Even if you think, well, maybe this is God, it's probably not long after that you're going to be con confronted with a thought and a voice or an event that says, if this is true, if you are the Son of God. <clears throat> and then he, he uh, not only challenges Jesus about the word that Jesus has, has taken hold of and received from the Father, that he, now he wants him to misuse the anointing that he has received. He wants him to to go in a different direction, a worldly direction, a humanistic direction of performing something and doing something with the anointing that he has received of the Spirit of God upon him. My Lord God, it, it just God show us. There's so much in that. Because what we have presented today is nothing more than humanistic spirituality that challenges people to misuse anything that God has given us and to use it in a way that blends in with the way the world operates. What I mean by that is you come to the Scripture that says, not only if you are the Son of God, Turn these stones to bread. Now, see, that's what the world believes to be a supernatural manifestation. 
It's the Hollywood effect. It's a special effect thing. It's, it's thinking people are Superman and Batwoman or whoever, Batty or <laughs> Wonder Woman, just that somehow we turn into superheroes and we do things, you know, leap over tall buildings, walk through walls, handle stuff. You know how all this garbage of supernatural, what they refer to as supernatural manifestation and supernatural power, which is really not at all. It's illusions. But people think that's the way spiritual things operate. People are thinking now that somehow, that if you have an anointing of God, you can turn these stones to bread. And they feel inefficient and disappointed when they try to do that, and it doesn't happen. Nothing happens. Stones will not turn to bread. Okay? Is everybody here listening? We have tried to manipulate the anointing of God to do humanistic things, to do things in a worldly way. And that's, see, the devil doesn't understand true, spiritual, eternal things. He's crafty, but he does not understand those things. Paul said if they had known, they never would have crucified the Lord of glory. They never would have known to do that if they could see eternal things. But see, the Spirit of God comes upon His people, you have available the Spirit of God to reveal to you the things of God. The devil doesn't know those things. Only those people who have an open heart to partake of the Word and receive every word that comes from the Father's mouth are given revelation concerning knowing the Lord. Now, when, when the devil did that, he was trying to get Jesus to act in a supernatural way as opposed to simply obeying the Father. And so when you walk in the anointing of the Lord, you are actually living in a different realm than what the world considers to be supernatural or spiritual. God's trying to open something up to us today, folks. He's trying to open our understanding, if we will hear Him, of our perception of what true spirituality is, how to walk in the Spirit, how to live in the Spirit. And it's based in the word that we hear from his mouth and the anointing that he puts upon us through the Spirit who is God. So think about this. The Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is the Father. The Spirit, God is Spirit. He's not three spirits. He is spirit. God is one. And we know him as the spirit, as the father, as the son. As he has manifested himself and given us life. But this is God. No. He will give us revelation of who He is if we seek Him, if we have a heart for Him. The thing that I hear from the Lord and that I pray over, not only just for me, but for all of you, I pray this for my family, I pray this for you, is that we would have a heart that wants to seek God and know Him. Not just try to have a belief in God and slide by, okay? But to believe in the Lord. Now, I want you to hear this. After the fall 
of man. From the Father's presence, go back all the way from the very beginning and you see this, that Adam, they were created to be in fellowship and connected with the Father in the earth, tending the garden. They were to learn how to multiply, subdue, have dominion in a godly way. But they fell, separated themselves from the word that they had received from the Father. But after the fall, I'm going to give you a real quick nutshell to understand this. God reveals His law. We know it as the Ten Commandments. The Ten Words, as the Jewish people would call them, are ten basic principles of life that's in connection with the living God. These commandments reveal what it's like to live in connection to the Father. Now, He gave His law so that we, so that mankind would understand why things were happening the way they were. After He said, if you take of this fruit, if you eat the wrong stuff, if you eat the wrong fruit, you're going to bring forth death. You're going to die. All right, everybody following. So, God gives His Word to show people, okay, this is what it's like to be connected. Because man lost his sense and consciousness of what was good. It was to give man an explanation. You ever had things to happen? You say, why did this happen? Why did that happen? Why is this messed up? Why is that? Well, see, God gives His law to answer the why. Also, in giving His law to give us an answer of why, it was to give hope so that man could understand, well, if I reconnect with the Father, life will be good. It was never meant to be turned into a system of we try to do the law. The whole point of the law, and Paul talks about this in the New Covenant, was to reconnect us to the Father in Christ. Was to reconnect us in a living relationship of the Father that when we would see the law, we would understand, well, I'm coming short of that. Life is not what it's supposed to be because I'm falling short of His glory. What is His glory? It is His living presence. I'm not living in His presence. I'm not living connected to the Father. I'm living separated from the Lord. That's what the law was given, to give us that understanding. But the end of the law was Christ Jesus. Okay? That we would not only have hope, but we would begin to search and to seek what it's like to live in relationship with the Father. Because the commandments are are foundational principles of what godly living is like. But we don't get godly living by trying to keep the law. We get godly living by reconnecting to the living God in Jesus and being filled with the Spirit. Having the life of God put in us who is Spirit. And the evidence of that Paul says in Romans 8 that we fulfill the righteous requirements of the law. We do what the law says because the Spirit of God is living in us. We're reconnected to the Father because we take of His Word. The Father who is Spirit. Remember, for God is Spirit. And the law, the Bible says, is holy, it's just, and good. Listen carefully to this. Religion tries to get us to start trying to do stuff 
if we do the right stuff, then we get the right stuff. That, and see, it's all reduced to that kind of relationship. Listen to me. Listen. There are many distractions in life. Many distractions in life. Listen by your spirit, your ear. God is wanting to re reconnect with us by who is spirit if we will begin to partake of his word and reconnect to him who is spirit and by his spirit who is spirit God live by the word that he gives to us not just bread alone See, we fall short of the glory of God. When the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, we automatically think, well, I've, I've done a bunch of bad stuff. That's not what that scripture is trying to relate to us. When we fall short of the glory, is we're not living in the glory of God. We're not living in the connection of the Spirit of God in our lives. And Jesus came so that we could get reconnected to the Father. No man comes to the Father but through me, is what he said. But the purpose was to reconnect us to the living God, the Father. Not get us into a thing of trying to do right and do this, well, i got to make this, you know, i got to watch myself. He's trying to get us so beyond that to where... He lives in us, and we live in Him. And it's by every word, and we have to focus on that. The Scripture says, let me I put some other Scripture down here so that you can hear this. When Jesus was talking in Matthew 6 about seeking the, the King James says, the kingdom of God, that is the reign of the Lord, the ruling and the reigning of God in your life, He said, seek that first. He asked the question, is not life more than food? Is not life more than food? Is not your body more than just the clothes you put on it? There's more to life than eating. There's more purpose for your body than just to have clothes on and look good. There's a greater purpose for your life. And it's found in Jesus. It's not your life. But see, what happens is that without Jesus, people focus on food. What they're going to consume. What's going to make them feel good. What's going to appeal to their understanding. And when I'm talking about eating with our appetite, this is much more than just, this is beyond physical food. What do, you, what do we consume with our eyes? What do we consume with our ears? What do we consume with our thoughts? Life is more than food. It's by every word that proceeds from the Father. Every word. Well, the scripture says that we're to trust the Lord with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct our path. In all of our ways. Well, everybody can be pretty good at church gathering, right? We come to here, everybody kind of, we we're going to direct our way, but it says acknowledge him in all of our ways. When you leave here, the way you drive down the road, <laughs> if you go to a restaurant, the way you act in, in the restaurant, the way you handle yourself, in all of your ways, acknowledge Jesus. Stay in connection in all of your ways. That is so simple and yet profound and for, for a demonstration 
of the power of God in our life if we will acknowledge Him in all of our ways. Even when you're dealing with the wilderness, there are events and people in your life that is your wilderness. And in your wilderness, you've been asking why. You, do, you need to stop asking why and ask the Lord, what is your word to me? In your wilderness, instead of asking why am I going through this, you need to say, Lord, what is your word to me? Acknowledge Him in all of your ways. For from His mouth comes knowledge and understanding. And he, therefore He tells us to, to seek the Lord while He may be found. And the easiest time to seek God is when you're in trouble. <laughs> I mean, really it is easiest to start calling out on the Lord. Now, that's not the, and we should learn that when we call on the Lord in trouble, we, we also can keep calling on the Lord in the good times. What is he trying to get us to do? See, it's our choice. He has revealed his word. He's revealed and said, this is what it's like to walk in righteousness, and this is what it's like to live in the Spirit. And you look at that and feel like, well, I'm, I'm short of that. I, my life doesn't measure up to it. The things in my life are messed up. I, that needs to change. The only way it's going to change permanently is to be reconnected to the living God inside of you and me by the Spirit and began to live by every word that comes from His mouth. Not just the word that you think you need at the moment. By every word. See, there are people who will say, Whoa, boy, I, I, I need money. Well, that's probably true. But you need a lot more than money. You need the Word of God that tells you how to take care of what He blesses you with so that you can move into abundance instead of living under the curse of the world and the poverty that it pr pr produces. Everybody hear what I'm saying? You may, there's a lot of things we're saying, Lord, I need this, I need that. But we need a lot more than what we're asking for. And our asking cannot be focused on our appetite. Please hear that. We perpetuate our condition by surrendering ourselves, by presenting ourselves to whatever we obey. Jesus said, don't worry about your life. How many perpetuate misery by continually giving themselves to worry and fear and focused on their lack and focused on their appetite? I need this, I want this. I need this, I want this. Lord, you need to do this for me. And the Lord would say to us, your Father knows that you have need of these things, but seek first, seek first the reign of the Lord Jesus in your life. Don't perpetuate issues and problems. They come upon all of us, but you're not to stay in them. Don't perpetuate those things by presenting yourself to obey the spirits of the world. Give yourself to the Lord. And if you will give yourself to the Lord and listen to his word, with all, and, 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 and he said, um, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. 
because my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways. So God's trying to exchange it. We give our life to Jesus, but he's trying to exchange our thoughts and our ways by giving us his word. And, while, and our life can't be focused on our appetite. It's got to be focused on God's purpose. Okay? By every word. And God is able to produce abundance beyond what we're able by we trusting and walking in God. Instead of following our appetite, we're following Him and every word that proceeds from His mouth. Let's stand up. We're going to pray. Pray this, say, Heavenly Father, I give you my life. I give you myself. For you to rule over my life as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, teach me to follow you. And Jesus, I pray. Amen.